Yo, what's up everyone? Uh, John here, or Uber, and it's my first time trying to really make a video like this. But I figured since uh, Leafy is permanently suspended off YouTube, I'm just totally gonna steal his gig with no repercussions. And that's where we are. So today I just kind of want to speak freely and uh, talk about sort of the last year and a half of my life, where I'm at, um, and sort of everything that's led up to this point. There's a lot of fun stories and a lot of uh, wacky antics in between, and I think you guys will be able to enjoy a lot of it. Plus, I never really share that much, um, you know, neither for my personal life, nor just intricate details of, of uh, the general ongoings uh, with you as my viewers or anything like that. So. Um, I mean, now's a, as good a time as ever, and there's actually some videos that would have been released that I'd been working on that have sort of like fallen through for various reasons, and I kind of want to take you guys through all of it. Um, right now I'm kind of stuck. <laughs> I'm homestuck as all hell because I have COVID, so I'm isolating, I'm uh, standing here, day three or something. I'm double vaccinated and I've already had COVID, so it's not like, you know, it, it doesn't feel too bad, but I'm terrible with is isolation. I'm a very extroverted person. I need a lot of social interaction, so I guess talking into this microphone, it's, it's not doing that much for me, guys. I've been streaming a lot, so if you guys want to check out my Twitch channel, link's in the description. I, I stream all the time now. Anyways. Um, this is the story I want to tell, and I actually think it's so fucking funny. I am actually gonna have to incriminate some of my, uh, friends and or ex-friends throughout this video. Uh, doing so may lead to them, you know, taking revenge. It's gonna have negative repercussions. We might be looking at a little bit of a blow up here. But I don't know, I've been wanting to tell this story for a long time, and I really think it's worthwhile. So let me take you guys back. This happened over a year ago. When I was, uh, I would say 80% done working on my Fallout video, I got hacked, and in the most ludicrous, stupid way possible. And this is sort of the start to the whole story and the thing that catalysted just the craziest series of events. And it essentially started with me getting scammed over my email. A guy from, well, a guy pretending to be from Ubisoft, he emailed me saying that he wanted to get me in on the Far Cry 6 beta. I can show you guys the email, just put it on screen real quick. There's no fucking way I fell for that, by the way. It's insane to me that I fell for that. That's something that, like, my grandmother would know to be a scam, right? The, the poor wording, phrasing, the absolute distinct lack of grammar. I mean, on multiple fronts, I should have just known this was a scam. Somehow, during the stress of the peak of the production of my Fallout video, I ended up trusting this guy, going back and forth with him, eventually having him add me on WhatsApp, send me a link to a Google Drive from WhatsApp, from the Google Drive, I download a zip file which includes three .exe files, one of which was named Far Cry 6.exe. And um, this guy was very adamant about me opening these three .exe files in a specific order. Now the thing is, I actually believe this guy to be from Ubisoft because the way they got me with this scam was that they sent this email to a bunch of influencers and one of the people that I recognized responded to the email saying they were interested. So that sort of put this into the legit person from Ubisoft category in my head. Plus, honestly, dude, scammers and like middleman uh, agent type dudes, they're the same type of sociopath. They have the same mannerisms, they have the same way of like trying to emotionally coach you into doing whatever they want. And I figured it does make sense. This guy has like a quota, he wants to get me onto the game. So anyways, i had been kind of a cunt to this guy, kind of leading him on and not really opening up the game. I was like, nah, I'm finishing my video first, man. I'm not doing this shit. Uh, but one day morning I woke up and I felt kind of bad about it. So I mentioned him, I was like, yo, what do you need for me to get me onto Far Cry 6? Just let me know and I'll get it out the way, right? And uh, he wanted me to open the files. Now, luckily, I didn't open all three files in the order he asked me to. I just opened Far Cry 6.exe, and the most haunting thing happened. Within 10 seconds, I got a text on my phone about my email pass uh, passwords being reset, right? Now, this freaked me out with fucking intense anxiety, okay? And here's why. The last time I got hacked, it wasn't by someone like this. These turned out to be some Russian fishers. Um, they were trying to install, like, remote control... Um, extortion malware onto my PC and to, onto a bunch of other people's PCs. They were trying to compromise influencer management accounts as well so that they could get a hold of a bunch of YouTube channels and uh, try, try to extort that or promote something on there or whatever. But uh, essentially, let me tell you this, the last time I got hacked, it was by one of my viewers and it was this French kid. And dude, my God, oh my goodness. This guy was Hacker Man. Have you ever seen Mr. Robot? Dude, this guy was Mr. Robot, okay? There's actually two Mr. Robots in this story, one of them being my, my friend. But the original French Mr. Robot, 
Mo, holy shit, let me tell you about this. When I got hacked by this guy, I was in the kitchen, right? I was making tea or something. I got a text on my phone about like an email password reset. By the time I got to my computer, I was out of everything. I was out of my email, my Outlook, my Gmail, my YouTube, my Discord, my Twitter. Um, he changed the, he had set scripts up. He changed the passwords and the phone numbers for all of my like social media, all of my, I couldn't even message anyone for help because I was out of everything, right? And then within one minute, I just got a message from a, an, an anonymous number on WhatsApp saying, so let's talk. This guy was completely brutal. I gotta be honest, he owned me completely. And I messaged him, I was like, <laughs> yeah, you really got me here, buddy. And he was like, you want your stuff back? I was like, yes, please. And he's actually super nice about it. He was a white hat hacker, which to my knowledge means that he was just sort of trying to breach any security and vulnerabilities that I may, may have had and sort of help me fix those things, right? All he wanted in return, and I gotta be honest, I would have given him anything. I didn't have that much money, I would have paid him a thousand dollars. I asked him, what do you want? Like money, like, he just said, do you know anyone at Instagram? I was like, what? I'm like, yeah, do you know anyone at Instagram? I mean, nah, I don't, man. And uh, he essentially just wanted his Instagram account unbanned, and I couldn't help him with that. It's like, all right. Um, but he just gave me my stuff back, helped me set up proper two-factor authentication, helped me develop like a secure password system, and generally just helped me set up my security properly, which ties into what I'm telling you about getting hacked by the Far Cry dudes, right? So, um... As an honor of the hack, the, the French guy who hacked me, I just left a tweet up on my Twitter uh, by Mo Danger, you know, a picture. I don't know if it was him and his friends or just a picture he liked, but yeah, that guy was cool about it. But that's what scared me so much from getting hacked this time was I knew what someone really good can do if they really get in. And I knew this was malicious as all hell. This was a guy who'd spent several weeks fishing me and trying to get into my life, right? Anyways, what ends up happening is that luckily, uh, I only opened one of the files and the entire malware didn't execute and they only got partial access to my PC. They managed to get, uh, I don't remember what it's called, but it's sort of like a Chrome cookie type uh, thing so that they could, uh, oh yeah, it was a session cookie. And uh, with the session cookie, they could essentially jack my session. So whenever I would go onto Chrome, they could sort of go through my session and get access to say like my Twitter, for example. And then they could use that to sort of hack me. And they had that backdoor lying around uh, for about a month and a half, maybe two months before they actually hacked me. Luckily, one of the things that helped me out initially was um, a good friend of mine named Saul. Uh, in our friend group, this is the actual hacker man. This guy works for a major top security firm in the UK, and he is easily the most technologically capable person I've ever met. When this guy says that he's <laughs> that he's moderately certain about something, he is more certain than anything I've ever been sure about in my entire life, okay? So he helped me out initially and he helped me sort my computer out and trace what the virus had done. Uh, I thought I knew how to use Event Viewer. Dude, when I let this guy Team Viewer my PC, shit went wild. He just jacked that shit up. I felt like I was actually in an episode of Mr. Robot when Saul was controlling my PC. And it was a really, really cool experience. We got to like uh, data mine a lot of the stuff. We tried to go after the hackers as well. And I actually wanted to make a whole video about this experience called Far Cry 6.exe. I even made, I think, about a minute and a half of the video. And it was just to try to do something a little bit different than what I normally do. And I thought, just thought it was a really funny story that I got fucking scammed by, a, by an email scam and ended up almost losing my life's work by downloading a .exe file from a Google Drive link that someone sent me on a WhatsApp number from, from an email from an Ubisoft employee that I could have just Googled doesn't actually work for Ubisoft, right? So yeah, that was how I initially got the virus onto my PC. What they used it for, I can't be sure whether it was actually the same people that hacked me or whether they sold my session cookie to someone else. But two months later, they took over my Twitter and turned it into Elon Musk. Uh, almost Elon Musk, but just with weird letters. And they claimed to be him and then they just linked people to this uh, crypto scam. And, and they actually managed to scam people out of, I believe like, if I'm not mistaken, like $16,000 is what they earned from doing that scam. They did this by taking over hundreds of different Twitter accounts, but I felt pretty bad because I was the only really big Twitter account that managed to fall for this dumb shit. Anyways, I emailed all the people that had received the original email from the Ubisoft scam and told them it was a scam and not to open it and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I finally got my Twitter back eventually. By the way, when I had to get my Twitter back, let me vent some shit. Maybe, maybe this isn't smart to talk about publicly, but I don't care. I, I'm, I'm past the point 
of giving a shit, okay? When I had to get my Twitter back, I messaged my manager and I said, hey man, how you doing? I, my, my Twitter's hacked and I really need help. I, I've sent in a ticket, but it's gonna take them days to respond to it. Can you help me get my Twitter back? And he said to me, yeah. 100% I'll, I'll sort you out. I know some people at Twitter. By the way, we don't work together. I got fired two months ago. I was like, what the fuck? So they fired my manager. I was like, I thought I worked for you. What the hell? That shit really messed me up. Now, I, essentially what happened is my YouTube network, Omnia Media, laid off all the people that work at the office in Los Angeles. And those were all the people that I knew personally and had sort of developed a personal relationship of trust with over four years without really telling me or really anything. I mean, they all got laid off and had to start working with different companies. And I lost my manager and, and, and that's actually also part of the reason why I haven't really had any lucrative sponsorship branding deals over the last like year and a half and why my bank account is $4,000 in the negative. Because apparently your YouTube network can just fire your manager. They hooked me up with a new manager. Now, by the way, I'm sure Scott is a nice guy. It's just that I really think you guys gave him too many people to manage or something. I don't know. Because I, I inquired about my contract with Omnia four months ago. And I messaged him four months ago. Sorry for airing you out publicly. But four fucking months. I wanted a 95-5 revenue split instead of a 90-10 revenue split. And I still haven't gotten around to it. You guys still haven't gotten back to me about that. There's no one from my YouTube network that I can talk to about jack shit. You ain't providing shit for me. I'm not getting any help with anything. Either, Scott, please start talking to me like a fucking human being. Or Omnia, give me a different manager. Or maybe I should just leave the network. One of the three. However, that's besides the point. Let me move on with the story, because... It's a bit long and there's a lot of tangents, there's a lot of stuff that happens that leads up to everything uh, that, that, that sort of culminated into where we're at now. But that was a part of it, that was definitely a part of it. So um, anyways, I managed to get my Twitter back, great stuff, get the hackers out completely. It seemed fine and I just started working on the Far Cry 6.exe video. I really just wanted to get this video out there and, and tell you guys a story of how I was so stupid that I got hacked in the most ludicrous way possible. But at the same time, I actually ended up being corrupted by greed, literally. So you guys know crypto, right? You know crypto, you know NFTs, you know influencer scams. Would you believe that I was pretty close to falling for that stuff? You, you know the worst thing you can do is scam your own viewers? Well, thank fuck I didn't. However, as much as it might put me in a negative light, this story is just too funny not to tell. I have to tell it, right? I had a friend at the time um, who is also a YouTuber. He makes meme compilations now, Meme Corp. Used to be called Vagabonds. Uh, used to be part of our friend group. And he tried to get me into crypto and into doing our own crypto. Now, essentially, I actually... My original idea was that I was going to make my own website. I own uberdanger.com, and my idea was because uh, YouTube took down The Adventures of Full AD Darius, one of my old League of Legends videos that my viewers really liked a lot. And I was quite upset about this because I really didn't feel like it was promoting violent terrorist organizations in any capacity. In fact, I think it wasn't that harmful of a video. I looked back at it and I've rewatched it. I mean, you could definitely say that the video is discriminatory towards certain cultures. You could say it's overly sexual in, in parts. I could go for those. I, I would definitely, you know, that's, that's not the hill I would die on. I could see those, but promoting violent criminal organizations? I just don't see it, man. And I disagreed entirely. I don't really think it's a very harmful video. So my idea was that I wanted to take my website domain that I really don't do anything with, and I wanted to put that video up there for everyone to just get for free. And my idea was also that if YouTube kept restricting and not letting me upload my Fallout video, I would also put that up there. And then I thought of putting a crypto donation link, because I thought maybe that way I can... Um, get some crypto donations. People could give me a bunch of Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever, and I, I can start putting my content out sort of in a decentralized manner. I, I don't know if you can tell, but I've definitely been consuming content on Gumroad in, in you know, in an extensive capacity. A uh, bit high-minded ambitions, and it probably wasn't going to work out the way I thought it would. But my mate convinced me that that was too much legwork, and that was a terrible idea. The phrasing of what he said to me, he said, Bro, we can be millionaires easily, right? Now here's the thing, that was the start of the premise of our crypto project, and here was my thinking, here was my perspective and my point of view. I don't think that we can be millionaires easily. I don't think you become a millionaire easily, and I don't, it's not easy, it's fucking hard. That's how I feel, right? 
the whole thing was that if we can't be millionaires easily, then I'm gonna prove a point to this guy across time a lot. I really am gonna prove that he's wrong and I'm right. And if we can be millionaires easily, dude, I'm willing to, to admit that I was wrong and uh, we can just easily be millionaires, okay? But I actually wasn't sure, I actually didn't know what the hell I was getting into at the time. Essentially, what he wanted us to make, and by the way, this was some of his friends at the time roping him into doing a public career suicide. And then he was roping me in to be a part of his career suicide, which ended up not happening, I think in part because of me. But that's besides the point. We were gonna make a decentralized finance token. Not to be confused with a cryptocurrency, although they are quite strikingly similar. The difference? Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum, that's a cryptocurrency. Cumcoin, Poopcoin, Shit Token. These are decentralized finance tokens. Now, funny enough, actually making your own decentralized finance token and promoting it on YouTube, believe it or not, totally against the terms of service. And I didn't know this at the time, but in the terms of service, there's actually a clause about any promotion scheme in a pyramid structure. And uh, if <laughs> I'm not sure if it comes up anymore, but back then if you Googled, is decentralized finance staking a pyramid scheme, it would come up in big black ball letters and it would say, Yes, Defi staking is a Ponzi scheme. So it was so sus, and honestly, I gotta be honest, right? If if uh, your per friend is like a public figure, a YouTuber, a streamer, whatever it may be, and they have like a really good public image, and people seem to fuck with them, the worst thing you can do for them as their friend is to get them into doing their own cryptocurrency. That's like the stupidest fucking thing. And, and the thing is, dude, I'm all for scamming people. Scamming people? Hell yeah. But scamming your own viewers? That's so goddamn peak. Holy shit. Those are the last people I want to scam. Dude, I want to scam other YouTubers. I don't want to scam my viewers. Jesus Christ. And I actually, for the longest time, didn't think this was a scam. Because, uh... First of all, I, I'd known the guy who was getting me into it. I'd known him for seven years, right? And I genuinely didn't believe that he would get me into something that would get me into trouble. Second of all, the other people we were talking to, they seemed genuinely passionate about making what they called a community token with, with, with secure from being rug pulled and all these things. If you don't know, a rug pull is when, uh, when the people that made the cryptocurrency run with all the money, leaving all the people that invested in it poor as hell. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning this guy's channel and so on is not to air him out or anything. Uh, it's because the name of the cryptocurrency was a, a combination of our two channel names. I'm Uber Danger, he's, he's Meme Corp, and the, the cryptocurrency was going to be named the Uber Meme Token. Okay, that's what we settled on. And I'm not shitting you. In between me uploading my Fallout video and several months after that, this was something that was in the works. We were having meetings about this. We were making logos. We were talking about, we were talking to different developers. There was be code being written. We had a guy set up a company in the UK. We had him get audited. We, we, we had a guy making the website. We were doing all this stuff and this was legitimately moving. This was like a real thing that we were actually doing. This wasn't like a meme or anything. I would say on my hand, halfway I was into it just to teach, my, teach the guy a lesson, just to prove I was right. Just out of spite, I knew that we can't be millionaires easily. That was always in the back of my my mind but I gotta be honest they like were halfway towards actually successfully scamming me I'm not gonna lie to you I kind of believed it I thought that we were just gonna do this cool thing and it was gonna be dope fast forward a little bit and the further into the project we get the more suspicious it seems to me the more it seems like first of all I don't know if I can trust these people with my public perception with, with uh, my viewers trust and the more I felt like I just didn't want to do crypto at all, it's, it started seeming like crypto to me was just a massive Ponzi scheme. Uh, now, I, I'll admit, over the years I've had what you could call a reasonable gambling addiction. Now, what I mean with that is that I know I'm extremely predisposed to ludomania. I know I have all the impulsive traits to become a gambling addict. So for that reason, I don't let myself spend a shit ton of money gambling. But I have done, a, I have dabbled a little bit in online slot machine gambling. And I, I know that enough to know what gambling addiction feels like to me, right? And to me, crypto trading, day trading, stocks, all of these things, to me personally, feel just like gambling. It feels like long-term gambling. And for what I'm like as a person, it's a poison to the mind, right? It's the thing that takes up my mind and takes up the, my day-to-day -day thinking and just completely ruins my structure as a person. So that's why I found out crypto wasn't something for me, right? But as we were getting further into it, I mean, <laughs> I didn't really know how to disconnect from the project. And one thing that ended up happening was that another friend I had uh, started catching on to what was happening. And he informed me 
that the guy working on the website didn't have any experience building a website at all and that some of these people might just be out to scam us for our viewers time and money interestingly enough I just started gaslighting this dude. Every time we were in the call, I was like, well, oh, so how, how, how's the website development looking? And I could tell he was sweating and it was great stuff. If there's one great thing that came out of it, it is that I really did enjoy having this environment where I could sort of narcissistically boss some people around in, in sort of a setting that had emotional weight on them. And they really felt like it was massively important to them that we did this project and we got the money going. And deep down, I think I knew I wasn't really gonna do it. Um. Fast forward a bit more, and it turns out that I don't wanna do it. When they asked for a $500 deposit into the liquidity, I just straight up said, I'm not paying shit, um, and you guys can do it without me, right? <sighs> now, this and a couple other things ended up in a sort of a massive falling out. Don't really talk to, uh, to the guy anymore that tried to get me into it, and he's not really part of our friend group anymore. Rest in peace. It is what it is. Um, I've just kind of tried to move past that. But because of this whole crypto thing, that was the very reason why I didn't make the video about getting hacked. Because the whole project was tainted by greed. It became this whole money thing. This whole period of my life just became about money and about, yeah, literally just pure greed, right? And it just completely ruined my creative drive. I didn't feel passionate about making that video at all, nor did I feel passionate about making this cryptocurrency. And it totally took the wind out of the say out of my sails when it came to like, you know, my creative production. I went from spending 10 months in a row working day and night, tirelessly making a th almost four hour long Fallout video to spending half a year kind of fumbling the ball on a crypto project that I ended up not doing because I thought it would be terrible for me and terrible for my viewers. And then I just ended up trying to see where I could go from there, right? Ended up making a, a Terraria server with some friends and dedicating that to be my next project. But that's essentially the story of, yeah, the almost happened Uber meme token decentralized finance fucking scam cryptocurrency. I felt pretty bad about this whole thing for a multitude of reasons. First of all, I'm surprised that I let myself be this tainted by greed. I'm 25 years old, man. I can't believe all it took was one dude telling me we can be millionaires easily. And people just talking shit about market cap and all this and that. And suddenly I was halfway on board to just fucking totally scamming my own viewers. It's fucking crazy. On top of that, I also feel bad because, I don't know, I led these people on a lot longer than when I knew I wasn't going to do the project. Like, legitimately, um... <laughs> oh my god, disgusting, sorry. This is the funniest part of the whole story to me. As peak as it is, and to the people, dude, I'm sorry I did this, but I had to go and do it. So, when I knew I wasn't gonna be a part of the project anymore, when it just felt like a scam to me, I told them, guys, I'm game. I wanna do the project, 100%, I know my role. But, I gotta stay consistent and keep those numbers up and pump those gaming videos out. So from now on, I'm gonna stick to doing my part, and you guys can just do the project without me being in all the meetings, right? And, uh, but I'm game. As soon as the, the crypto's ready, we're all gonna do it, right? This was me lying through my fucking teeth. And they believed it. And they kept working on the crypto. They hired a developer. One developer didn't work out. They had meetings. They hired a different Swedish developer. They started making logos, really actually fleshed out the website, did this and that and blah, blah, blah. For weeks. Until they wanted the $500 into the liquidity, at which point I confessed up and said, ah, I ain't about to do that shit. I'm not paying jack shit. Fuck that shit, homie. At the end of the day, um, well, when you think about it, maybe if I had done the massive crypto scam, perhaps now my bank account would be looking a lot better. And perhaps, maybe you guys wouldn't think as highly of me. Probably you guys wouldn't think as highly of me now that I think about it. I am honestly, like, at the end of the day, I'm really, really glad I didn't do it. Just because fucking who the fuck cares, man? Crypto's so stupid in the head. That's all I gotta say. It's just a stupid thing. I hate crypto. I hate crypto almost as much as I hate David Goggins. And that's personal. So, yeah. Anyways, that's what? It's 27 minutes of me just speaking straight from the heart about getting hacked and not doing a cryptocurrency. I think that's pretty much what I was going for. As I said, I was just kind of stealing Leafy's gig here. He used to just do commentary over a CSGO surf gameplay. And it's taking me... Oh, shit, dropped a coin. It's taking me a hot little minute to finish this Terraria video. 
and I want to put something out in the meantime, plus I've been meaning to tell this story for ages. Some of my viewers are probably wondering where I've been, what's been going on, because usually if I'm gone for 10 months, it's because I was working on a video for 10 months, but legitimately here, there was also all this other stuff that happened in between. Like for example, with getting hacked with the Fallout video, I was a 50-50 coin flip of, pr of pressing a little file away from losing my life's biggest work. You didn't see that on the sideline, but for the last two or three months of making the Fallout video, my computer was compromised with remote control software, and there were literal Russian hackers trying to get into my PC. Unironically, right? We traced it down and, well, maybe a VPN, but presumably Russian hackers. Oh, God. And, and they literally did take over my Twitter account and turn me into Elon Musk and promote a, a crypto scam. That alone should have served as an omen to me that I'm not supposed to do my own crypto, but I didn't listen to Destiny. Yeah, that's it. Anyways, I think, uh, I think that's it. I just want to thank you guys for watching and thank you guys for sticking through. I never do these videos where I just uh, speak freely and just kind of talk to you guys. But... YouTube algorithm! Poo, 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 poo. That's what I'm talking about. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks, guys, for tuning into this special episode of totally not my normal style of content. And yeah, I love you guys. Shit. I'll see you guys in the next video. Mwah. Well, I'll punch the mic too. Just because I know some of the people I don't like will also watch this. Listen, you got to keep it real. Oh yeah, right, right. And cause I never released it, but I know my friends still put a ton of effort into doing it with me. Here's the like one and a half minutes of the Far Cry 6.exe video that I was planning on making before the whole project was tainted by greed. I think this would have been a pretty cool video. And in the future, I want to be more open to just doing stuff without thinking too much about being perfectionistic and without letting my mind be so tainted by money and this and that. This would have been a pretty cool video. Here's uh, whatever came of it. So, yeah, I'm that idiot. I hate to admit this, but it's too funny, so I have to make a video about it. I fell for an email scam and installed an extremely malicious virus on my computer, which subsequently compromised me to a greater extent and almost ruined my entire life. This video is a chronological documentation of the entire escapade, which started with an email from Peter Oldman. Hello, dear gamer. My name is Peter Oldman. I'm a PR manager at Ubisoft Studios and I have a business proposal for you. In 2021, our new game Far Cry 6 is released and we invite you to our closed beta version of the game. We are ready to cooperate with you in the future. Before the release of the game, we will contact you and give you a code to review our full-fledged game. If you are interested in our offer, let us know. If the email came to the channel manager, please tell your gamer about it. We will immediately send you the invitation to the beta version. Thanks. Peter Oldman, PR Manager.